and welcome to the program. I'm Dean Henrich, great to have your company, and today is all about the exciting world of truck racing, and we're here at Barbagallo Raceway in Perth, Western Australia, for round three of the Super Truck Nationals. If you're new to this form of motorsport, I can tell you they're big, very powerful, and when they're three wide, it's some of the most exciting racing you're likely to see. Plus, the major players from across the country, so Stake Pride is also on the line, with New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, and Western Australia all represented. It's going to be a big show. Hope you can stick around. These thundering, smoke-belching diesel monsters have carved themselves a deep mark on the Australian motorsport scene and have provided fans with super exciting racing for many years now. Against strong odds in its economic climate, 2009 has seen this small but fiercely competitive group continue to deliver a national series of tough, close races, putting on a show like no others can. This year, four rounds will make up the championship with teams crisscrossing the country with races held in New South Wales, Victoria, here in Perth and the final round hosted at South Australia's Malala Circuit. Super truck racing is made up of two divisions. The first is the slightly smaller, more agile lights and are governed to a minimum weight of three tonnes. But with their 450 horsepower engines and better manoeuvrability, they're a very competitive racing package. The super trucks are the front runners and lumber in at a whopping five tonne and punch out a very impressive 1200 plus horsepower. Don't be fooled by the overall size of these super races they can break out a sub 13 second run down the quarter mile. Stretch the legs on one of these beasts and just under 200 k's top speed is the result. Although in championship trim, the rules require the trucks to be limited to 160 kilometers per hour. A specially designed race tire, water-cooled brakes, semi-automatic transmissions, and in most cases, twin turbocharging are just some of the smarts built into a modern day super truck. Over here in the West, it's the hard-working team from the WA Sporting Car Club that take on the responsibility putting on this and all the events held here at the raceway. For the fans, they were treated to non-stop action starting with 12 qualifying sessions and a massive 37 race schedule. The open wheeler categories would be well represented with Formula Vs getting on the track with three eight lappers. The hugely competitive world of Formula Ford, also a big draw card in WA, the recently developed Formula Classic division are slowly but surely building their numbers, this very enthusiastic group putting on a show for the appreciative fans. The always popular historic touring cars would show how early model low-tech cars can still produce great racing. Street cars would be another division that would provide a big spread of vehicle types and manufacturers, as would the field of sports cars, Mark Sports and sports sedans. For the HQs, the weather conditions, the big grids and the always close racing meant just one thing, and that's non-stop action across the two days. Now one of the big movers as far as popularity is the improved production car class. This group put on a fantastic series of races, the prestigious Garth Tander Trophy up for grabs. For this event, the category would field an all but full grid with a huge range of vehicle types and brands. Not one, but two huge grids of early and late model saloon cars would top off the great range of classes doing battle over the weekend. Such is the popularity of this class that the fields have needed to be split into two groups, the earlier VN Holdens and EA Falcons, and then the VTs and AUs of the later models lined up and ready to put on their special brand of super close racing. Another feature of the event highlights would be the huge burnout competition. A recent addition to the Barbagallo Raceway Complex is what's likely to be the biggest purpose-built burnout pad in the Southern Hemisphere. Some 1,900 square metres of freshly laid concrete would be the venue for three hours of burnout action. This pad even boasting dedicated lighting, the fans and participants loving every tyre shredding minute. down to business day one of the super truck Saturday morning and a 20 minute qualifying session would signal the beginning of a great battle. The big yellow rig Bob Middleton on board and just the narrowest of margins but he would grab P1 at the close of the session. 
Steve Zammett of the number 40 machine grabbing second spot, less than four tenths the gap. This likely to be the trend for the weekend's racing. Third for the big rigs would go to Bo Hewitt, but missing from the timesheets, local man Rob Waters it did not start next to his name, and at best a start from the back of the grid for race one. In the light division, the Pertec sponsored Isuzu of Steve Coulter would put together a clean, fast 20 minutes and qualify third quickest outright. But this was only a half a second better than the nearest in his class. The number eight truck of Craig Yardy also on a good pace, 104.85 his time. <laughs> the customary rolling start for race one of the super truck meeting and the news would be all bad for WA entrant Rob Waters. Starting from the rear of the grid after not qualifying would be just the beginning of his dramas. Issues with the power plant would mean a very long night for that crew to get the Kenworth into any sort of shape to race on Sunday. Meanwhile up front it would be the total opposite with Bob Middleton leading from flag to flag. After six laps the gap to the next best would be just over 10 seconds and a fastest lap in the process. The battle for second and third would however be a much closer one. It would be the Pertec light of Steve Coulter that would continue his qualifying form and take it to the bigger machines grabbing third at the checker. Steve Zammett locking down second with a clean run, Bo Hewitt fourth and Craig Yardy second light and fifth outright. Another feature of super truck racing and a bonus for the fans is the co-driver race. A second set of drivers take charge of the rigs with their own qualifying session and two six lap races. Saturday's race one spoils would go to Peter Hewitt driving the 81 Kenworth. There would be a great battle for second and third. Kevin Anderson piloting the Kara Kara Suzu Light would take the points from Michael Coulter. A total of eight different manufacturer types, 18 separate models, two classes and a packed grid of 29 cars, this has improved production car racing at its best. It's one of the fastest growing categories in Australia and for the WA players it's been a rapid rise to a very successful class with a great range of machines and super competitive racing up and down the field. Yeah, it's great variety because uh, kept together by the, the, the rules itself. So, um, you can compete a rotary versus a V8 versus a turbo car because uh, the rules keep them quite close, so good racing. The action would kick off with qualifying and race one on Saturday. After grabbing pole, Kevin Ledger on board his WRX would take the points for race one. With Ashley Barnett second, Kerry Wade third, Matt Cherry's Monaro in fourth, and Rotary man Gary Hassler fifth spot in the RX-7. The under two litre class and the number 27 Mirage of Colin Harper would be first across the line. Jim Gellin's Mark II Escort second, Steve Lee, Peter Howard and Jeff Duckworth, all grabbing valuable points. After a dry first day, Sunday would loom wet and slippery for the crews. And if the conditions weren't challenging enough, this category also supports a reverse grid format. This to open the proceedings for the second day. Using four-wheel drive to advantage, Warren Phillip Clark would get a great start and put his legacy into the lead, but throw most of it away going off on the first corner. As the field came around for the first lap, the legacy would still be out front. However, the big guns would be on a charge. Wade in the Evo 9, threading his way through to be second, with the lead car well and truly in his sights. As the cars came back in view of the fans, Wade had taken the race lead and would hold this to the flag, winning by a massive 16 seconds. Brilliant wet weather drive by under two litre campaigner Colin Harper would net the Mitsubishi man a very well deserved second outright after starting well down the grid in the reverse format. Kevin Ledger, another of the front runners to get through the pack well. He would do enough to take third and second in the over two litre class. Jim Gellin in the Mark II Escort, good work for fourth. Peter Howard, after cranking it very sideways on the opening lap, taking fifth. This class is very well known for the battles up and down the grid. This two-way Monaro fight being joined by another V8 and the Commodore of Brett Stewart, eager to get involved. Wade, Ledger, Barnett, Major and Stewart, race two's top five. And a great example of diversity of this category. Evo, WRX, 200SX, Rotary and V8, a fantastic mix of makes and models. The under two litre runners equipping themselves very well. Colin Harper and his Mirage taking race two. Gallen, Howard, Lee and Seawood making up the top five. 
After a patch of reasonably dry weather in the middle of the day, almost on cue, the conditions turn ugly for the third and final hit out. Favourites to take out the trophy, a first and third each so far, Wade and Ledger used their four wheel drive advantage and made a blistering start. Wade taking the lead on the first corner, only to have a turbo blow inside the first lap, ending his day. As Ledger slipped by, it would now just be a matter of getting to the flag in one piece. That easier said than done. Two laps in and dramas would bring out the yellow flag, an effects camera catching the action. After a great day, Colin Harper would put the Mirage off in the standing water, joined shortly by two more competitors. The damaged cars cleared, the heavy rain now stopped, it was green flags for the field. Ledger getting away cleanly, leaving a great little battle just behind, with Cherry in the Monaro and the Majors RX3 working hard for that spot. The traction level was still very low, making it extremely difficult to stay on track, let alone on all four wheels. This off resulting in a red flag and safety car conditions again. Normally with just a few laps remaining, the race would be called. However, with the Tanda Trophy up for grabs, organisers opted to regrid the field. A two lap dash to the flag would now decide the final race. Ledger making no mistake, taking the third. At day's end, Ledger would take the GT Tanda Trophy. Major second, Sean Farrell third, Wade and Barnett making up the top five. In the under two litre class, Jim Gallon. Green in the Fiesta second, Howard, Lee and Harper third to fifth. It's day two of the on-track haulage Broom Freightliner Super Trucks and the changing track conditions will be the major talking point of the teams. A big card of events is scheduled, the Super Trucks lining up for four six lappers before tackling the 10 lap Super Pre to finish the day. As we mentioned earlier in the show, there's a huge support lineup this weekend as well. The saloon cars are about to show us why this category is attracting so much interest. Such is the popularity of the category in the West that two separate grids are now being fielded. The earlier EA Falcons and VN Commodores started the ball rolling a few years ago with enthusiastic racers quickly moving to the later model VTs and AUs. In came a group of competitors snapping up the original cars and this now resulting in over 70 competitors lining up for events across the season. Front running racer and category sponsor Brett Stewart and his Formula Tech Dino Centre combining the absolute enjoyment behind the wheel with the commercial benefits of the series. It's been really good for the company, great awareness. We've had the opportunity of uh, doing two V8 supercar rounds. Um, you know, there's like 76 cars in the category with all their name over the front. Qualifying and race one of the Formula Tech Dino Centre series would be the schedule for Saturday across the two classes. For the EA and VNs, plenty of action. And for Rob Markon on board the number 61 Falcon, he would take his P1 qualifying form into race one with a win. Grant Johnson would have a busy day running in both classes, taking second here, keeping out Gary Hills. De Piolo and Sharp making up the top five. For the AUs and VTs, again a full grid. Their race one going without incident. The change of models for Grant Johnson would be a good one, taking the race from flag to flag. Even more impressive, this is a borrowed car, courtesy of fellow competitor Rob Perosi. Nathan Callahan, a fine drive for second. Kerry Wade making it a Holden 1-2-3. Jason and Craig Tremere, fourth and fifth, and the quickest of the Falcons. There was little doubt up and down the grid that for day two, it would be the conditions that would be the challenge for the drivers. Although a dry track as the EAs and VNs gridded up for race two, it quickly changed as the lights turned green heavy downpour and cars off almost immediately. A couple of laps in and the rain would ease up a little, unlike the battle up front. Johnson and Marcon had taken up where they'd left off. Lap after lap, less than a couple of car lengths separating this pair. Mid-race and third place Hills would try and muscle his way into the battle. A little too hot here. Marcon doing a great job to keep him out. The pressure from behind would in fact spur him on to take a lunge at the leader. Fantastic racing by this group. 
for the fans plenty of entertainment up and down the grid. The 92 car of Sharp working his way back after being assisted off the track on lap one. He would fight back to good points and seventh. Grant Johnson using all of his experience to hold off the challenges, taking a hard fought race two. The second race for the AU and VTs would be much drier, but no less intensive. Johnson got away to a couple of car lengths, Kerry Wade having a big go into Ford Corner and paying the price. The number 20 car of Colin Tremere making the same mistake joining Wade. Mid-race distance, Johnson is in control, with Callahan second and series sponsor Brett Stewart a fine drive up into third. He ran the number 75 car well and truly on song with clean, consistent lap times. In the Ford camp, it would be a battle to stay in touch with the top three. Jason Tremere's back straight push would momentarily net him fourth, only to be beaten to the line by the hard-charging Holden of defending champion Dion Panizza. Four Holdens and just one Ford in the breakup of results for this race two. The third and final run for the EAVN runners would be a beauty, with all eyes on the super close Johnson and Marcon battle. Johnson got out in front, but at every opportunity, Marcon would be snapping at the bumper of the 34 car. The fans loving every minute, especially as the two make contact down the main straight. Marcon would bring out all his moves, keeping the pressure on, as well as watching for the advancing hills. This is saloon cars at its best, and why this category is just so popular. Unfortunately for Marcon, his hard work would be undone, as hills snuck by out of camera view to take second just before the heavens opened to drench the remaining two laps. Johnson the win, Hills and Mark on the top three in this great race. Johnson doing enough to take the class for the meeting, Mark on a well-deserved second on the day, with Hills grabbing the third place points. Further testament to the talent of Grant Johnson, a quick change to the borrowed VT for race three of the AU VTs, and although he didn't quite get the start he wanted, it would be a clean first lap and in position to pounce. Nathan Callahan would get the jump and do very well to hold back the charges for the first two laps. However, Johnson was in that kind of mood and took the lead never to be headed. Race three would mean a big drive from Kerry Wade after starting way down the grid. He would also prove his talent as one of WA's top drivers, running in no less than three different categories over the weekend. In this race, he would carve through the field in a dominant display of clean, fast driving to eventually finish fifth. Other good drives would come from Dion Panizza, the number one car now lapping consistently and grabbing third place in this final run. Again, event sponsor Brett Stewart in the Formula Tech Dino Center VT would prove that he's not there just to make up the numbers. A well calculated drive to take fourth place. The news all bad for the Ford fans with a Holden clean sweep of the top five. At the day's end, it would be Grant Johnson with plenty to smile about, qualifying the VT on pole and taking three from three, all in a borrowed car. We actually had our own car, we just couldn't get it to run properly on Friday and Rob Perosi said, oh, I'm, I'm working so I want to have a bang in mind. So yeah, turned up, it's good. For any national category travelling across the country, to compete in WA is always a big commitment. For the Super Truck Group, their long trek is well rewarded with good competition and very enthusiastic fans. We love coming to, to Perth, you know, like the guys over here are just uh, really helpful, they can do anything for you. For the defending Super Truck champion Bob Middleton, he comes to the Perth round second in the series, trailing Steve Zammett. But a good day one's racing has put him well and truly back in the hunt. Yeah, yeah, we managed to put the truck on pole and it was, um, yeah, we were fairly quick. We were probably about half a second uh, slower than we were last year, but overall the conditions they haven't been all that good this weekend, so uh, put it on pole, won the first race. For most of the super truck field, it would be routine maintenance for their rigs after day one's racing. However, for West Australian Rob Waters and his crew, it would be a marathon all-nighter to sort the number two Kenworth after a problem on the opening day. Yeah, we had a uh, engine failure, uh, just component with the engine failure. Um, come prepared, but you're never too prepared, I suppose, so uh, yeah. Bit of drama, so 30 odd hours, uh, rebuild it, come back in, but we're happy. The first of Sunday's races for the trucks would be a dry start. Middleton on pole with Steve Zammett to run alongside and try and protect his series lead coming into this round. 
It would be a good clean start by all and seemed to be a fairly uneventful race. Middleton would lead from the start and grab a big gap. The lights of Colin G and Kevin Anderson providing the entertainment for the crowd with these moves mid-race. As light rain fell for the final two laps and just as the results seemed to be settled, Middleton would spin inside of the flag, handing the win to Zamet with the rest of the field also running by. Disastrous as far as the title points chase, but good news for WA man Waters who would pick up the extra spot after starting rear of field. Meanwhile, Coulter, Yardy and Anderson doing very well in the lights. Race three would look like a copy of the earlier run. A dry track to start with and a super truck at the rear of grid. Of course, this time it would be Middleton after his spin on race two. And as expected, he would have the big charge back through the field. Within two laps, he would round up the lights and put the move on waters down the main straight. That job made easier with the number two Kenworth still not 100% and obviously down on outright power. Out front though, Zamet would be in control but have his mirrors full of the 81 truck of Bo Hewitt. And just like race two, almost on cue, the heavens opened with a couple of laps to run. It made it tricky for a while but no change to the standing, Zamet taking the win, Hewitt trying hard but settling for second and Middleton a great job up to third. The lights would hold up their end of the bargain, keeping the entertainment level very high with lots of sideways. Coulter taking the points from Yardy and Seaton. For regular followers of super trucks, they will know that the next two races will turn the intensity up a notch or two. As if a field of megaton huge horsepower machines isn't a big enough recipe for awesome racing, let's throw in a reverse grid race and then a co-driver's event. And a great sight as the lights out front prepare to hold back the massive super trucks eager to slam their way through. One lap down and Bo Hewitt punches a big hole in the field, followed closely by the number two truck of WA Man Waters, the light trucks having to yield these two positions quickly. Critically, Middleton and Zamet would get held up, allowing the two front runners to slip away, but not for long. This is just a couple of laps later and Middleton on a charge, taking to the grass to exact this move into second place and of course important points for the defending champion. Hewitt would do a good job to keep Middleton back in second place. Zamet slipped up to third, the lights seeing Yardy grab first for that class, Coulter settling for second, a good run from Seaton for third. For the co-drivers race, the pressure would be on to put on a show, but make sure they don't damage the machines and jeopardise the possibility of championships for the lead drivers. Rob Waters would switch to the number 12 light truck and lead the way to the first corner with the two super trucks thundering through the pack. Unfortunately though, just one lap later it would be all over for Waters in the sand trap, but Brett Kelly and Rob's super truck a great run and making Peter Hewitt and the Kenworth work for his first position. Anderson a fine race in the conditions and grabbing the light points. Plenty of anticipation for the 10 lap Super Prix to finish this big weekend of truck racing. Steve Zammett will be protecting his championship lead and trying to add to his two race wins so far. For Middleton it would be critical he gets as many points as possible if he's to defend his 08 title. As is customary, the lights would lead off with the pace car holding back the super trucks. The track conditions would be damp and still tricky, leaving Anderson on board the number 12 light to show the fans plenty of sideways action. Just two laps down and the super trucks would be in front. Hewitt showing plenty of class, Zamet following with Middleton well and truly in the chase, showing Zamet a mirror full of the number one truck at every opportunity. For the lights it would be Coulter that would have somewhat of a lonely run out front, taking his good form all the way to the chequered flag. G and Seaton would battle over track space during the mid part of the race, with the 18 truck winning out, taking fourth. Yardy on board the number 8 Isuzu would finish off a good couple of days, grabbing second, adding to his first and three second places all up. Back out front and with the laps running down, Hewitt would remain in command of the super trucks. Zamet doing a great job to protect his second place. For Middleton, he would hope that lap traffic might help his cause to overtake the current championship leader. 
However, that would not be the case. The positions remaining as is to the flag and a great event for all concerned. For Coulter in the lights, it's been a perfect weekend with a top class result. Yeah, it was a great win. Uh, it looks like we've wrapped up the championship for the year. We've won the round here at, at uh, Wanneroo. Puts us pretty comfortable for the, uh, the round at Malawar, so, which is in about four weeks' time. So, yeah, going great. Trevor Page, the owner of the truck, he's really, really happy. Jeff Macken does all the engine work. It just keeps running and running. We've got no complaints. It's fantastic. The super truck winner, Steve Zamet, extremely pleased with his efforts and looking to take it all the way to a championship. I've got the lead of the championship at the moment and uh, Bob Middleton is catching very fast, but I think I've still got the edge on him for the last round in Adela going over to Adelaide, so um, hopefully we can keep it and hopefully pick up my first championship win. In the final wash-up, Zamet with maximum points, Middleton, Hewitt and Waters. And the lights' top three would be made up of Coulter, Yardy and Seaton, Anderson and DG rounding out the top five. They say that winners are grinners. That's definitely the case for the crowd who have braved the weather. A full program over the weekend with some fantastic racing. And what about these truck boys? Some awesome action in the wet and the dry. They really are the giants of the track. Well, that's all we have time for. I'm Dean Herridge. On behalf of the entire production team, thanks for your company. We'll see you next time.